Muhammad Abbaspur and Zahra Naqibi. It's a weekly ritual for Marzia Abbaspur and her husband, visiting this memorial for her brother and sister-in-law in Windsor. We were very close. He was very supportive and Zahra was like a sister to me. The city built this small tribute, a bench, a plaque, and trees to honor the five people aboard Flight 752 that call Windsor home. I really like the idea of trees because Zahra and Muhammad both were really fond of nature. They have fun in nature. It reminds Marzier of all the times they spent together, both in Windsor and back home in Iran. <laughs> My favorite memory with them was every year we had a place in Iran. It was a special place on the mountain. We had lots of fun in that place. Shortly before his death, Mohammed had convinced Marzier to move to Canada. Despite the loss, she has decided to stay. You're in a new country, you came to join your brother, and now suddenly he's gone. And what has the last year been like for you? Uh, it was very difficult for us because uh, every place we go, <laughs> we have their memories. With us, it's very difficult for us, yes. Marzier takes comfort in this memorial, but hopes all who come here take a moment to remember her brother and sister-in-law. People who see this plaque can know what happened to them and uh, who they were. I miss them. <laughs> Always a kind, giving person. This is how I remember Shikufa. I will never forget that. Dr. Shikufa Chipenejad was known in Edmonton for her generous spirit, often opening her doors to Iranian women dealing with barriers accessing medical care. I would pick up the phone with her, ask her, do you have time to see a community member, newcomer in the city? And she would say, even I don't have the time, I'll stay a little bit longer in my clinic and just bring them over and I will get them checked. Shaiest Imaginia met the OBGYN years ago while fundraising for the community. Now she keeps her friend's memory alive by helping others. For me to keep her legacy, I thought the best way is to live the life that she wanted to live or she lived it once, and that was by the giving. In honor of the 29 children killed aboard Flight 752, Thank you very much. Shaista set out to help 29 families over the holidays. Hi there. She's now delivered donations to over 200. Here you go. If I had the same fundraiser and she was still with us, I am 110% sure she would be the first one to donate. It sounded like she touched a lot of lives and she helped a lot of people. She did. She did. Elsa knew her teacher wanted to visit this shrine. So Eight-year-old Elsa Jadidi sent this memento home with her father a week before she was set to return from Iran. The third grader was killed alongside her mother, Sahar. When I heard the yelling and the, you know, screaming from you know, teacher's area, I ran there and uh, I was asking what's going on. And they told me, oh, we just think that Elsa and her mom were on that plane said, no, that can't be true. The news devastating everyone at her school in Scarborough, including the principal, Majid Asab. Elsa used to have the most charming smile. Whenever she smiles, her smile will light up her face and she will melt your heart. And uh, I, I remember telling the mom, uh, <laughs> uh, keep her smiling because this world needs her smiles. Yeah, I miss you so much. In her memory, the kids created this short yeah. video. You were so nice and also very kind. And the school created this award, given to a student who embodies the same qualities that made Elsa so special. We wanted to create a lasting tribute to ensure that her amazing qualities and uh, her memory 
will be celebrated and those qualities can be recognized for many years to come. The first recipient, 10-year-old Abbas Muhammad. I heard that she was a good student, did good stuff. She was kind and caring. Do people miss her in the school? Yeah. It is beyond unthinkable that she will no longer have the opportunity to pursue her dreams and that her future patients have been robbed of the opportunity to be cared for by someone so dedicated and talented. A book of tributes dedicated to young leaders who were destined for greatness. It's heartbreaking for all of us. They were working for the betterment of the communities and they were thinking of the uh, those who are vulnerable. They were hoping to help make changes. Uh, Dr. Bijan Dasgabe remembers his cousin's children as highly accomplished students. Zainab Asadilari, a fierce advocate for mental health and an aspiring doctor. Her research published posthumously at 21. At that point in time, I had this very deep passion for science. Mohammed, an MD, PhD student, was also inspiring for his empathetic nature. Mohammed Assad Larry is being recognized for his leadership initiative. The Canadian Medical Association posthumously awarding him for his exemplary leadership. I have learned a lot from him. I think we get absorbed in what we, we do as clinicians. Along the way, we lost the passion. We forgot uh, what's important, and the passion that he had will always be with us. He is also one of the kindest and most gentle people I know. This book, published by their family, a chance for reflection, to ponder what could have been. He would have made a real difference in this world, and the world is poorer for losing him.